Audio Jungle. Audio Jungle. Grace Mugabe and her G40 allies' evil plans exposed. ZANU PF's deposed Generation 40, G40, faction was within touching distance of snatching the party's presidency amid revelations that its vile plan included the capture of several strategic institutions, including public media, just days before the ex liberation movement's December 15 Extraordinary Congress. This also comes as the vanquished group has been mobilizing against President Emerson and Gagwa's government under the National Patriotic Front MPF, banner and a number of its staunch allies, including ex-police commissioner General Augustine Chiri, Kudzin I Chipanga and Ignatius Chombo, remain under the kosh over a litany of political and professional indiscretions. G40 kingpins had not only set upon a plan to capture key state organs by supplanting tried and tested cadres with their surrogates, across the media spectrum, and numerous parastatals, on the Thursday before the army takeover kicked in, but their trump card was the 10th Zivirisa Qua interface rally and subsequent ZANU PF Congress, and where they would have wanted to install Grace Mugabe as acting president as well, said a source. So sinister was the plot that we would have very well seen Robert Mugabe, and Feleka Foko going on leave and that unhinged woman taking over the reins for up to three months after the old man would have been forced on an extended vacation. And as the desperation to seize power set in, you will be aware that they even tried to divide securocrats by roping in people like Turi on their side with a view of, even, forming a military buffer for the old man. They said, adding the crafty schemers had also tried to mask their true intentions by throwing in former Justice Minister Happy Mbanyang's name. Of course, we know that the junta still wanted to put An Gaiwa in charge at Congress after sponsoring the spontaneous revolt against their former leader by ZANU PF provinces, but it had to bring forward its intervention after the G40's increasingly bold maneuvers. And like in any situation where such evil plans collapse, there have been many casualties, albeit willing messengers, in the form of the Chiris, who are now being swept by the tide after a number of dossiers detailing their expedient actions such as the $120 million spot fines and illegal fundraising debacle, failure to deal with Frank Vuyanga's cases and unresolved top comp extortion saga, the sources said. With the ex zanu PF Women's League boss influence on her 93-year-old husband, analysts polled by the Daily News recently concurred that it was quite possible that the acerbic Gush Hungo Holdings owner would have gone on a dry run of party and state presidency after the party's December 15 Extraordinary Congress. In the circumstances of the succession struggles in ZANU PF in 2017, one cannot entirely deny the plans and actions of the various factions while pushing Grace to the presidency appeared a long shot. It may as well tell us how political strategies were becoming amateurish and how seasoned politicians were throwing caution to the wind," Rash Mukundu, a former Freedom House researcher and commentator, said. Ethiopian-based security expert Maxwell Songwame also said anything was possible, with these hawks and, the theory seems plausible given Ann Gagwa's earlier dismissal. Nonetheless, the military might have gotten wind of this hence its coup. However, Shakespeare Hamwadzwa disagreed and said G40 kingpins, in the form of ex-higher education minister Jonathan Moyo, and savior Kasaku Wares, were just out to create smoke screens for their real motive. The fight was for Mugabe to leave office. So the G40 wanted to create a fake scenario where Mugabe would feel safe after his exit. The G40 had someone else other than Grace. They knew Grace was not going to make it so they were just using her for their hidden agenda, the pro-government analyst said. And as the ZANU PF leadership contest, and intrigue continues, even after Mugabe's November 21st ouster, Moyo and the deposed leader's nephew Patrick Zhu Wow have not only sought to continually project the Harare regime as illegitimate, but have escalated efforts to fight Dan Gagwa and his military-backed government under the NPF cover. According to recent media reports and indeed his own Twitter posts,
The ex Chilacho North legislator still believes the nonagenarian leader was wrongly and unjustly pushed out by the Lacoste faction and its security sector allies. As such, Moyo and his G40 allies, notably Zhu Wao, have set in motion plans to derail Ngagwa by roping in Mugabe, National People's Party leader Joyce Mujeru, the Movement for Democratic Change and a dissident group called the 2018 Resistance. And in their latest, and nefarious activities to oust the new ZANU PF leader, it is believed that the embittered lot was working with certain remnants of the old security structure and apparatus that was behind the former president's feeble attempt to cling on to power in the after the November 15th military intervention. Meanwhile, Churi and several other Grace allies remain under attack for a number of imprudent decisions including the alleged looting of state resources that have been exposed by police deductions saga, and messy fight with big boy Pakaira. You see, Ngagwa is such a calculative man for he simply lumped the former Zimbabwe Republic Police ZRP, heads political sins to his professional indiscretions, which culminated in the latter sacking on December 18 last year. In my understanding, the litany of allegations ranged from his dodgy Kuaidza club activities to the ex-top cop's refusal to investigate cases reported by Buyanga against five parties and protecting Servodonates implicated in the Danish and Buaya extortion cases, said a source. Apart from these issues and complaints, his obvious G40 bias also reflected in the police's failure to arrest innocent Hamandish on six assault and kidnapping charges, and where his officers would even claim they could not locate the former youth boss yet he was routinely attending Grace's interface rallies, they said. And with the long-serving police chief under fire for presiding over a generally corrupt force, enmeshed in such hellish, and emotive issues as the spot fine saga, the incoming government not only had enough fodder to boot out Yuri, but found support even among opposition quarters. With all these outstanding issues that strike at the core of the force's integrity, new Home Affairs Minister Robert Mpofu has thus sanctioned sweeping changes to improve police conduct and operations, now being spearheaded by police boss Godwin Maitanga. In Manic Holland, for instance, Chai Panga is accused of grabbing a headlands farm that had been earmarked for a state university, while Trombu is facing fresh charges of trying to muscle in on a Cariba fish farm. In the Buyanga case, Chiri is accused of sitting on dockets for the prosecution of Tawanda and Wendy Jakachira, lawyer Tamu Kamoyo, Simon Cheruwa and Lawrence Muswa over the flamboyant businessman's loss of two Harare properties. On the other hand, the stricken man was sucked into the Ngawaiya case after Chief Superintendent Nairad Zaima Jachini, Superintendent Shepard Tukna, Constable Clever Gadzakwa and Vengai Zeno failed to appear in court despite arrest warrants having been issued. And this was after the Chinese Business Association had raised complaints over continued harassment by the alleged syndicate. And despite efforts to clean up the security sector of rogue elements, Chiri was seen as a hindrance.